Good afternoon, everybody. Rob Leslie is my name, and I'm the founder and CEO of Sedici. Our business is all about identity. We help businesses prove that you are who you say you are and keep your information safe. I'd like to introduce you to Emily. Over the last number of years, Emily's shopping patterns have changed. She's moved from buying at bricks and mortar stores to buying online. This creates a number of problems for merchants. They need to know that Emily is who she says she is, and once they've confirmed that she is who she says she is, they need to keep her information safe. We've come up with a solution to this problem, and it's called Sedici. Sedici is patented software that allows two parties to confirm that the information that they have is the same without ever exchanging the information. Today, what happens? When Emily wants to buy something from a retailer, say it's a bottle of wine, she sends her date of birth in encrypted form from her browser to the server in the, in the retailer's store. That information has changed hands. We fundamentally change how this process works. We take the date of birth and we hash it. That's the same. But then we apply the hash to a randomly generated graph, and we get a second graph. In the retailer, they would previously have gone through a similar process, and they would have ended up with the same graph, hopefully. What we do is, instead of exchanging the graphs, we break it down into its micro-components, and we compare the micro-components. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 of them. And if they all match up, then we're able to say that the two pieces of information actually are the same in the graphs. Therefore, the information that created the graphs must be the same as well. I'd like you to think a little bit about identity. Our identities exist all over the web today in different places. Some of it is true, some of it is not true. What we want to do is to take the Sedici technology and get organizations that hold lots of verified identity attributes on us to convert that information into the Sedici format, make it available on servers so that we can then access it through an identity exchange so that merchants who have never identified somebody before can leverage the information that others have previously done before them. If we could switch to the demo, please. Here's an example. I want to buy something. I've got three items in my cart, and I'm going to buy them. So I click Pay Now. I get a standard payment form. In this form, I've got my credit card details and a single piece of personally identifiable information. In this case, it's my email address. I click Verify, and in my browser, it creates a graph. That graph is compared to a similar graph that's in my bank, and I have a match, and my transaction's processed as fast as that. Can you switch back, please? The key thing here, no information left my browser, no information left, my, left the server in the bank. The information is in integral. Identity is enormous. It underlies every commercial transaction. I need to know who you are so that I get paid. Everybody needs it. Banks need it to do KYC. Payment companies need to do it to make sure that they get paid and not ripped off. The sharing economy, when I sign up for Airbnb or Uber or whoever it is, I need to know the provider or the consumer is who they say they are. And a basic age verif verification check, are you over 18 or not? Our model's really simple. It's transactional. Every verification we do, we charge a fee for. But the interesting thing is we give 30% of that back to the provider of the information. Yet they don't have to give any information because it's all in the Sedici form. Today, I'm delighted to announce that BT, British Telecom, the largest telco in the world, has selected us to start building the identity exchange for the UK. For us, that's a game changer. We're looking to compete in two specific areas. 
the prevention of fraud, which is real-time monitoring of credit card transactions, and the identity verification area. We've all had, many of us have, had the call when we're on holiday to say we've identified a strange transaction going through your credit card account. There's a lot of false positives. In the identity verification area, it's slow, it's offline. We want to bring those two things together and make it fast and accurate. So if you're a merchant and you're worried about fraud, or you're worried about keeping your information secure, you need to have a conversation with us. Go and have a look at our website, www.sadici.com. We would love to have that conversation with you. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Judges. Is this a download somebody has to put on their machine, or how does it work? It's three lines Who of initiates it? Yeah. Three lines of JavaScript that the website, the merchant owner, puts in their website on the payment page or a form that is ca gathering this um, private information. So it's a cut and paste. In the fraud market, how large is the segment that relates to identity theft that would probably not be solved by this technology? Like how much of it is hacking versus, I mean, if I get access to your personal details, I can impersonate you regardless of this technology, or am I missing something? If you get access to my personal details, I'm in trouble. Right, so what we're trying to do here is to create a process where there's a piece of information that is only known to you, um, that you have in your head and only in your head, and that you can use that with merchants or banks or government or whoever it is to prove that it is you in conjunction with the other bits of information that they might ask. Fraud is massive, and I read a statistic last week that 18% of all people in the United States experienced identity theft of one form or another last year, which is just staggering. That's 50 million people. So it is an enormous problem measured in the tens of billions. What's the basis for the pricing? The value that we think someone is going to want to pay to process large amounts of stuff so it becomes de rigueur. They, they, they want to do it every single time to avoid the potential of fraud. And it will range from pennies up to multiple dollars, I would imagine, depending on the value of the information that's being um, verified. And we think the, mer the merchant or the, the bank or the government agency, for example, that is providing the underlying information will have a role to play in deciding how much they want to charge for that information because it becomes a revenue stream for them as well. So is, is that the incentive for these folks to put everything into the exchange? Because you're, you're trying to kind of leverage all of the information across different services or providers or holders of that information so that if I've never talked to you, I can still go to the exchange and validate that it's you, right? Well, the, the key message is the exchange doesn't have any data. The data will always reside with the owner or the holder of that data. So the exchange is just rooting a request. Okay. So what we're saying is that the browser creates a graph, the holder of the information creates a graph, and we're getting a true or a false response, an attestation of trust, essentially, that says somebody else has verified this individual before, maybe AT&T or Bank of America or Citi or somebody like that, and then you can rely on that as well. And does this displace an existing identity solution that somebody may have bought or a fraud solution, or does it run alongside something like that? It could run alongside, but it could equally displace. And then coming back to my pricing question, so how does your pricing compare to what they're paying for these kinds of services already? It's a lot less, okay. significantly less. So it sounds like you're, you're better than the existing solutions, you're cheaper, so what, what is the biggest barrier for your business, your business to take off? We're four guys. Um, we need certain scale and we're delighted to say because BT believe in us, believe in what we're doing. They bring that scale. They've got enterprises who have large amounts of data that they will convince to put into the exchange or to hook up to the exchange. And they also have lots of SMEs on the other side who want to consume that information and get those trust uh, attestations in order to grow their businesses. Does the user know this, this profile is being created? about them that can be used across merchants without them? I'm adamant that 
the user must know what's going on because at the end of the day, it's about providing convenience for the user, for the consumer. They want to be able to know that they're not being ripped off. They're, they want to know that their details are being checked with, I don't know, a bank or a government agency or whatever. And it's being done in order to, I suppose, reduce fraud and, and make uh, the whole internet safer for everybody. And I, I like to think of it as a sort of rising tide is going to float all boats. Uh, so, you know, this is one of those things where collaboration actually should work really well. What's the team's background? I've spent 30 years in, in technology. Um, I was part of the Dell team in Japan that started Dell there. Um, I left when it was about $300 million and started a startup, which we sold uh, in 2000 for multiple tens of millions. Um, I have another business that I have an involvement in that does corporate identity, not personal identity, um, which is sort of KYC for AML and stuff like that. We have two guys in, in the UK who have just left Vodafone. Um, he was, Jim was the head of information assurance in Vodafone. Howard was the head of public sector accounts. It was a $450 million business unit within Vodafone. And Richard's background is uh, sales and business development, technology again. So I have a question. Uh, I don't know if I fully have wrapped my head around this. I'm trying. Uh, given that this is a more secure identi identity system, uh, what is the thing that has kept people from, from doing this before? Is it that you have to get distribution with a bunch of people in order for it to work? Like, what is the innovation you guys have, have come the, upon that, that made this possible? The, the core technology is based on a protocol called zero knowledge proof, which has been around for a long time. But it can be computationally heavy which means you need some decent processing power in the device or the browser that it's being used on. Plus you need decent latency between the, the browser and the server against which there's a, there's a handshake going backwards and forwards. Up to now, we've had sort of patchy connectivity, uh, low processing power, we've got those problems solved. So there's no barrier technically to stop this happening and that was the biggest barrier. Well, we're out of time. That was uh, sorry, uh, Sadici. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Great job.